Hey friends, thank you so much for tuning in today. We're going to be talking about Fenty Beauty. I have had so many requests to talk about this line and ever since I showed my little haul on Snapchat and Instagram, you guys were like, you got to tell me how is this working for you? So I'm here to explain how these different face products worked for me. It's a definite like complexion heavy line right now. So we're talking about foundations and different contouring, concealing, blush, highlight type products. Don't have any sort of eyeshadow or lip product from this line. They do sell a lip product, but I don't have that. But yeah, this video is not my first rodeo trying these products on. Not a first impression. I've been playing with these on and off for the past week or so, but as I go in this video, I'll explain the formulas we're dealing with and the different colors and this and that. And um, yeah, I welcome your feedback in the comments section as well if there's anything you've used from this line. And I do feel like I'm just adding my review to the pile of reviews of this brand on YouTube. But I do think what makes reviews valuable is is having a lot of them to see. So many different people, so many different preferences, different skin types, different skin tones. The key is just finding, you know, I think a group of people that you know will give it to you straight and honest and take those reviews, lump them together, and help yourself figure out your buying decisions. But anyway, I'm just rambling now. Here's my video. I'm going to show you applications along with my reviews as we go. So take a look. All right, guys, first things first, we've got the foundation here. Um, this is called the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. Foundation. And it's in this, um, I think, really pretty and kind of unusually shaped bottle, frosted matte type of container. It does have a pump, which I appreciate. I am very pro pump with foundations. And I wear this in the shade 190. And there are 40 shades total in this line, which makes it really outstanding, I think, in terms of giving hard to match skin tones likely something that will match them. Also, people on the very lighter dark ends of the spectrum who struggle to find like a really good shade match. So I think that's awesome. And I also found the descriptions to be pretty helpful as I was trying to find which shade I would be. So I have 190 and that's described as for light to medium skin with neutral undertones. So that's the one that works for me. And I do find that it is a pretty accurate shade match to where my skin is at right now. And the short story they say about this foundation is that it is a soft matte long wear foundation with buildable medium to full coverage in a boundary breaking range of shades. So this said to shake well and then I will pump out one full pump and a little extra and it's very, very liquidy, a very runny foundation. Um, not as runny and liquidy as um, that latest double wear one, the Water Fresh that I recently talked about. But as far as liquid foundations go, this just feels very, very liquidy and not too, you know, terribly different from a lot of liquid foundations out there. So once I've gotten that patched all over my skin, I like to use my Sigma F80 brush with this. And something that I've noticed with this foundation is it does have this nice ability where it seems like it's almost hanging together as you blend it across the skin. Like it blends very easily and very nicely on my skin. You know, it's practically like it's creating this veil, you know, instead of ever looking streaky or anything like that. It's an extremely even application with this stuff. I do find it to be mattifying. Um, you know, I feel like I just went over my nose there. I'm seeing a real absence of shine in that area. And so I think, you know, while this brand may be succeeding in terms of catering to lots and lots of skin tones. Odds are a foundation of this type is not going to cater universally to all the skin types that are out there. So if you are super, super dry and you benefit from a foundation that gives you a lot of extra moisture or you don't love, you know, the all matte finish, this might not be for you still. But I wouldn't be surprised if the line, you know, continued to expand after this. This is really just an initial launch that happened. And while it was a lot of products, I think there's still more that can be done. So as I look at my skin, up close right now, I am seeing um, very even medium coverage. It's super consistent all over my face. Like I said, it blends out really easily as liquidy foundations tend to do, but still, I mean, it's it's super even coverage. It does not feel um, tacky on my skin. It feels pretty smooth. I don't feel a total absence of moisture, but I can already tell areas of my skin that do tend to be dry certainly don't look moisturized right now. Like they, there is a little look of dryness in some spots. Spots. They claim that this is going to be light as air on your skin. I feel like I agree with that. They say it's um, resistant to sweat and humidity. These last few days that I've been testing it, actually, we have gone from like a perfect little fall feeling climate in this area 
to very, very humid once again. So I have put it through some sweat and humidity and I, I'm really not feeling the staying power so much with this foundation. I feel like I've tried a lot of things that have lasted better on me than this because I don't really have a super challenging skin type for staying power. Um, my trouble area tends to be around my nose, you know, but um, I felt like I was having a staying power issue pretty much everywhere. As I've checked this stuff in the afternoons that I've been wearing it, um, I felt like it looked pretty non-existent on my face, you know, just looking at the sides of my face and stuff like that. And I am normal, not terribly oily skin at all. Usually my only issue problem area is around my nose or my T-zone. So while this foundation really excels in terms of being able to give you a shade match and blendability and just ease in application and all those things. And also if you like a matte foundation, it does look matte, you know, at the start. And while I didn't look terribly greasy by the end of the day, that wasn't the issue. It was just like the, the look had faded from my skin so much. Next up from this line, I got the Trio of Matchsticks. This is a very cool packaging design because we've got some sticks here, but check it out. They magnetize, so you could have a whole big army of these things and like put them together. I mean, I totally just got into my child's mag formers last week and really enjoyed that. So yeah, I'm loving the magnetic element to this line. But you can get a little trio of these um, to sort of get a flavor of what they're meant to do. I got the trio in light, and this is the lightest trio of shades available. I was going back and forth like, am I medium, am I light? But um, from what I could tell from swatches, the contour would be as dark as I'd need and the lightest shade might be able to conceal for me. I thought anything darker with that, I might not be able to use it as concealer. And that is the claim with these. It says each set comes with two matchsticks matte skin sticks for concealing and contouring and one matchsticks shimmer for highlighting. They say they're weightless, easy to blend, and stay put. It's a cream to powder formula, that's how it's described, and they say it's impossible to tell where skin ends and makeup begins. The shade that is gonna be my concealer is called linen. So I've got that and it does twist up this way. So it's just looking like, you know, a jumbo lip balm with this cool little uh, hexagon shape. Amber is the color that I would use to contour with and it's definitely a good contour tone. And then the shimmer skin stick that's part of this trio is in the shade Starstruck. And we will talk about that more in a second as far as the shade. And then I ordered one just individually because I wanted a shade that could act as a blush. So if you look under the line of shimmer skin sticks, you'll find one called Yacht Life. <laughs> and this is a pretty peachy shade with a golden shimmer. So as my first step with these, I'm gonna take linen and I am going to truly use this as directed as um, concealer. So I'm gonna take this and patch it over like this top area of my skin here hoping to add some coverage. And as you can see, it's a little, you know, lighter than my skin. So it's not a total skin tone match, but I'm getting added brightness out of a color like this. It feels creamy going on, but there is some stiffness to these sticks. And I don't find them to be the easiest things to blend. There's a little more dryness in these than I would like to see, and definitely much more dryness than I want to be putting on my under eye area. And again, I feel like, you know, that foundation was really geared toward people with oily skin and then these matchsticks are none too moisturizing either and they claim that cream to powder formula. I don't think they truly feel cream to powder because things that really do that just get this silky slip to them like immediately. This just feels like a really stiff cream, you know, a kind of stiff dry cream. But it's not setting too quickly on my skin. As you can see, I was able to get everywhere. I used my Sephora. Pro Airbrush Concealer Brush, which tends to apply a good amount of pressure to areas where I need it, and it's able to blend out most anything. Um, I certainly achieved matteness, brightness up in here, but um, it, this isn't going to be the kind of tone that eradicates your under eye circle. I mean, I can still see that through there because that's the thing that takes either just, you know, the ideal concealer t shade for me or some sort of a peachy corrector. Like, that's just what my skin demands in that area. So that under eye area is, I'd say, looking kind of dry on me now. And as I wear these, it tends to <laughs> look even more dry and also dry like right up in here, this area between my eyebrows where I just tend to have more dry skin. Next up, I'm going to use the Amber Contour Shade. And this, like I said, is a really 
really good color to contour with. Kind of cool in tone, it really mimics the natural shadows, you know, that develop on your skin. I am using my Real Techniques contour brush. This is again kind of good for applying that pinpointed pressure, blending that contour exactly where I want it blended and not pulling it too high or too low. But everything I said about the formula of the last one, you know, it's the same story here. It's a stiff kind of feeling as it grazes across the skin. It's not super creamy. Maybe the thing that holds up staying power wise really well on oily skin, but um, on dry skin, it kind of just exaggerates dryness. The color tone of this, guys, I really enjoy it. I think that's such a natural contour and I may continue to use this from time to time because I think that's just really um, a dynamite shade there. What you may not be able to pick up on as well just watching me on camera is the amount of pressure that I have to apply to get this blended out. It's certainly not gonna be one of those things that leaves any annoying tackiness on your skin, but I think it lacks some creaminess. So I've used both of the matte matchsticks. Now I'm going to break out of that trio that I got and use the one, the individual one that I got for blush called Yacht Life. And I'm going to just kind of draw some of this on the outer part of the cheek here. Again, this is a peachy shade that has a kind of golden sheen to it. I'm just going to blend that out with an e.l.f. small stipple brush. And while this shade does contain shimmer, it's not an entirely different formula. Like it's got a similar feel to the others. It leaves zero moisture on the skin. You know, um, you gotta apply a good amount of pressure as you as you get that blended. Pretty shade though. I, I feel like what I'm finding over and over again with the stuff I've tried in this line is like, the formula may not be everything for me, but the shades are really good. Like I like the colors of the matchsticks. I like the color of the foundation. I like the color of this blush. In fact, I might add just a little bit more of that blush. I think if your skin tone is on the deeper side or on the tan side, this this shade may not be quite enough to show up super well. But for my skin tone or anyone lighter than me, I think you might have really nice luck with this. See, I think it's super natural, super radiant. Even though it contains shimmer, it's not like an ungodly amount of shimmer. And let me tell you, we are about to the point in the video where we're bringing the shimmer because there is one of these matchsticks, the one that came in the original trio that I bought, and this one is called Starstruck. Very, very shimmery. Are we seeing this? We're talking super light, very reflective, um, has a hint of like a pinkish undertone to this shade. And so if you consider that a person with the lightest skin tone is gonna buy that trio, they're gonna need a highlight that's gonna really bounce off their skin. And I think this will definitely do that. As I look really close and kind of blend it out on my skin, I'm seeing ultra fine flecks of shimmer here. This is not one of those um, liquid or creamy highlights that ends up just looking like undetectable, um, really sneaky sheen on your skin. It's not sneaky at all. There is identifiable bits of shimmer that I would call like micro fine glitter is what it looks like when you look up really close. So I'm going to put some of this on for you so you can see what I'm talking about. And again, just like with the other formulas, this is kind of dry, it's kind of tugging across my skin, but it's gonna give me just an absolutely luminous, dewy glow. I'm gonna go down the nose with this thing. I'm gonna put a little bit on the cupid's bow. I'm just gonna start blending. I'm gonna try to blend really carefully and lightly with my finger here. What I'm trying to do here is just sort of press the product into the skin and hope that the heat from my finger can just work it in a little bit better. Because it is kind of a dry stick, but a beautiful color. I really, I could do without the actual, like, identifiable specks of, of shimmer there. It doesn't look particularly pretty as I look up close at my skin, just because these sticks are a little bit dry and I'm seeing, you know, a lot of dryness up in here between the brows. It's not especially pretty. But you will find the very satisfying thing about the match sticks is that they all hang together in a little chunk, and so now I've got blush, contour, um, 
concealer, highlight all together. And the trio of the matchsticks was $54, but to get one matchstick, so like the one blush that I got, that's $25 just to get the one. Now I also got one of the powder highlighters. It's one of the Kilowatt Highlights uh, Freestyle Highlighter Duo in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. So here is Lightning Dust right here. Here's Fire Crystal. One is more like subtle sheen, more of a pearlescent, softer shimmer. And then the other side is absolutely like wild shine right here. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of this shade just so you can see. And again, I'm going on top of other highlighter that's been applied to my skin. And we're definitely trying to create the illusion of some moisture and glow on this skin because it's been very dry products thus far. But I'm just dabbing some of this shade everywhere. It's definitely bright enough to like show up on my skin, that's for sure. I'll give you a little splash of this shade too. I'll give you a little bit of that right over here. It really shows, and that's with hardly any product on the brush. Like these are really serious highlights. This is a very bright highlight. I think if you were the fairest of the fair skin, you would find that this stood out on you because it's just next level brightening. And there's a really yellowy shade in this line. There are pinky looking highlights. I think they've got a lot of variety here. So I did my eyes and my lips. Um, there's no like eyeshadow palette from this line and I think there's one lip color, but I didn't order that. Maybe I should have, but I'm sure it'll show up in one of the million other Fenty Beauty reviews on YouTube. But yeah, as far as these face products go, I mean, I feel like I'm radiating glow right now, but it's so funny because to feel the texture of my skin, it's really very, very dry. Like I couldn't wait to give myself some spritzes of setting spray after I had gotten everything on here. My skin just really seemed like it was lacking moisture. And you might think that it should have better staying power therefore because it's not like dewy, tacky, or like prone to transferring off like onto my hand or something else throughout the day. But oddly enough, I had a lot of fade from this foundation as the day went on. And it wasn't in a like my oils or breaking it down type of way. It just seemed to like very evenly seem more and more non-existent on my skin. The matchsticks, you know, really on point shades. I was very happy with everything in the set and I also liked um, the individual one that I got, but it's a kind of hard to blend formula. The shades worked really well, but it's a stiff stick that does kind of pull across the skin. Now, as far as this particular highlight that I got, this one in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal, like if you're a really light skin tone and you struggle to find something that's going to pop off your skin, I'm definitely not the lightest of the light, but if you are there, I still think this would be a really popping highlight for you. One is no doubt more frosty than the other side, but it's not in a thick, chunky, glittery way. My overall impression is just that we've got a line here that's really mastering shades, but I think there are still things that this line needs in terms of different formulas to make it really workable for a wide range of people, because having all this on my skin now, you know, it's just it's not really meshing for me. It's not a texture that I look up close at and think, yeah, that looks awesome. You know, the closer I get, the more I want to back away because I can see dryness up in here. I can see more dryness around my eyes. I'm normal skin, just not absolutely loving this for my skin type. And I think drier skin, it could be even worse for you. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I don't want to come across as too like negative on the line because I, I think there's a lot of wonderful things happening with the line. I think it's just something that formula wise could stand to have a few new additions. But if you struggle to find that proper foundation shade, I think you've got a really good shot of doing it here. And I was honestly surprised that I was able to, by just shopping online, actually find my shade. Sometimes a wide range of foundation shades can do one of two things. It can make you feel like, oh, they're gonna have my shade, but then you can also feel super intimidated by the fact that there are so many shades to choose from. How do you hone in on your one color? But it was definitely possible for me to find a good shade match in this line. And hopefully those who are on the lighter and darker end of the spectrums felt like they were represented in this line as well. But again, guys, thank you for your time. I'd love to hear your feedback. If there's anything you've tried, let me know how it worked for you in the comments section, and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.